Um, um, a piece of notebook paper. Please um, take one out and reflect on the three following prompts on the board. Um, one, what are some things that you think about on a daily basis? Two, how aware are you of political events, what's going on? Um, do you watch the news? Do your parents watch the news? Do you read newspapers? Do you talk about politics with your friends? Um, and three, what is one thing you hope to accomplish this year? I'll give you two minutes to think. One more minute to think. You're fine. So there are no wrong answers to these questions, so just write what you feel. We're going to try and bring it back together. Betty, do you want to share a few things that you have? Yes. So, <clears throat> I think about a lot of things on a daily basis. I think Can about you name one? my family. I think about what I'm going to do, what I'm going to eat. Um, that's great. I don't follow politics whatsoever, but I think that's sad and I should probably start. I just mm -hmm. don't. And I hope to accomplish graduating this year from eighth grade. Thank you so much. So and Fantastic. Into a good high school. I'm sure you will. Amanda, what what are some things that you had? Um I also think about my family and school work and my dog. Um and I hear my mom and dad talk about politics and we get the newspaper at home but I don't really read it. So I okay. hope to become more aware of that. Fantastic. Something Claire, you wanna share with us what you had? I think about my family and school and chocolate and um, I, when my parents are driving me in the car and the news is on, I listen to it. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. I didn't get to the third one. That's okay. We'll put these papers aside for just a second. And so you remember the activity that we did yesterday about the French and Indian War and um, the, the Empire in 1763. So you took notes on British troops in America, debt and taxation, the Treaty of Paris, relationships with Native Americans. Um, so if you have questions about referencing those notes that may or may not exist in your notebooks, um, you can raise your hand during the activity and um, I can help you with that. But I'm going to pass around a sheet of paper and there's going to be a star next to um, an identity. Um, Michael, can you tell me what identity means? Um, in her context. <laughs> if I said that... A student is a type of identity. Um, 
that I identify as a student. Um, a personal trait that is unique to oneself. That's a fantastic definition. Um, can you um, repeat what Michael just told us identity was? Um, he said yes. that it was uh, something unique, a personal trait that's unique to you. So, so characteristics that define a certain type of person. That's, that's great. Um, so take a minute and quietly read the identity that has the star next to it. And think about what it would be like to be this person um, during the French in <coughs> I was expecting us to have seven students in this class today. So Amanda and Claire, can you please share? Thank you so much. Just, just, just read it for now. Take one minute. So when we were to, talking about our do nows. Um, a lot of people mention that they think about their family, that they think about chocolate, or um, what they're gonna what they're gonna do during the day. And some people were interested in politics, um, but most of you said that it's not something you think about all the time. Um, people in 1763 weren't that different, and there were a lot of big political events happening. But most people were just concerned about getting through to the next day. So. Um, Imagine that you were this person, and it's 1763. Um, the war with France that we talked about yesterday has ended, um, so that's great. Or is it? Um, so pair up with the person next to you. Um, so that would be. Yeah. And introduce yourself. Um, for some reason, fate has brought you two together in British North America, and it is your job to convey who you are to your partner and talk about what are you afraid of, what do you hope to do um, in the short future, and um, what are some things that, that you think about on a daily basis if you were this person. And could the other person, your partner, help you with some of your problems? Yes or no? Um, so use that six inch voice that we talked about. Um, so you're not disturbing the other groups, but go ahead and check. I mean, I live in Boston. She lives in New York. 
This is this is a hypothetical situation. I don't know what you're doing. Okay. So that that gives her some clout in society. So so think about think about that. Think about the money in the class. How's it going on the class? Yeah. So we are Yes. It's a long time. Do you miss your family? And are, are you English? Um, Scottish. Okay. So, so what are you doing fighting for the, the English in America? <laughs> that kind of stinks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you, do you get to write your family? Do you write letters? <laughs> so, so what do you think about that? Who do you? I am a 22 year old American farmer, and I'm trying to do my best. Yeah. Where do you live? I was raised in Virginia, but now I just live on the farm. On the frontier. On the frontier. I, I hear there's there's Indians out there. That's dangerous. They're gonna come and kill your wife in the night. I know. Good thing he's here to fight for you, huh? Did he say thank you? He's been away from home for two years. Fighting for you. How do you feel about that? You're very very yeah. good person. So think about um, the the frontier and where the um, to, to fight in America, mostly to protect fighters on the frontier. Um, and you've been away for a long time, and you're not even English. So so think about what that. Means. You miss your family. I'm glad I don't live back then. So. Who are you? I was an American Indian. Okay. Oh, so you're so oh, fantastic. Do you do anything in Boston? Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so you're providing the and savage Okay. So we're going to bring him back. Um, I heard some really great discussions going on. Um, Jess, um, can you share us what your group talked about? Sure. Well, I was the Native American Indian in the Ohio River. Um, and if any of you weren't one of those, um, a little background is my tribe allied with the French during the war. And now the French are gone, so everything's drying up. And the British colonists are coming in and clearing out the land, cutting down the trees. So we're starting to run out of resources, um, which is bad because people are beginning to, to die and we're just running out of materials and goods. Um, my partner was the Scottish soldier, um, and he's 16, um, living in the Pennsylvania frontier. We're assuming it's male. Just made her male. Um, <laughs> and Sorry, ladies. we talked about how possibly she- but that, but that, can I pause you for a minute? That's interesting because um, if you were a woman, would you have been fighting for the British regiment? No, all, and mostly young men who are getting conscripted into these armies to come overseas to fight. Um, so their women, um, their wives, their sisters, they're still at home in London or um, the English countryside or Scotland um, or even Ireland. So, um, yeah. So we talked about how she or he could help me by possibly if we ever met, maybe talking to his colonel and helping us like reinforce our trade routes. Fantastic. Max, can you share with us what you and Michael talked about? Um, I was a 22-year-old American father with a young wife and a newborn child. I was raised in, I was born and raised in Virginia, but now I am living on a small back country frontier farm. And then... How does your wife feel about that? She's very nervous. Yeah. The whole war was very frightening during some parts. And then um, my, um, I was talking to this 16-year-old Scottish soldier, 
Um, and then I was thanking him for um, being stationed to protect us and our family. Fantastic. Um, well, from, from here, I would like a transition into talking about a painting that has, um, it's called the, the Death of Wolf by Benjamin West and has a bunch of different 